Good morning. Today our primary objective with this video is to review alpha decay. Specifically, we'll try to understand what that symbol means. And we'll come to understand that during an alpha decay, radiation is emitted. And a new element or atom is formed. Alpha decay occurs as a result of an unstable nucleus. So the real question is, when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? Our secondary objective will be to analyze questions like these. Polonium-210 is a radioisotope that undergoes alpha decay, and if ingested in large quantities is lethal. Fill in the missing atomic numbers for the decay equation. So we'll come to understand what this equation means, and how to solve for x and y. We'll also be looking at this example. In a hypothetical radioactive series, 21999 GBM undergoes three alpha decay processes. What is the resulting product? So, the first question we'll answer is, when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? So here's a nucleus of an atom. Let's focus on counting the number of neutrons and protons. There's six protons and six neutrons. Now we know that protons have a positive charge. That means that protons will repel each other. This is called an electrostatic force. And so the real question is, what keeps a nucleus together? Well, it's not the electrostatic force because the protons are repelling each other. So there must be another force. And this force is called the strong nuclear force or just the strong force. The strong force interacts between neutrons and protons and neutrons and neutrons and protons and protons and is attractive in nature. However, it acts at very short distances, only within the size of a nucleus. So when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? Well, it has to do with the ratio of the number of neutrons to the number of protons. And it also has to do with the size of the nucleus, helium, which is very small compared to uranium. So we're going to use this graph to analyze when a nucleus is stable or unstable. Notice the x-axis, we're plotting the number of protons, and the y-axis, the number of neutrons. I've plotted this line which represents a one-to-one -one ratio of neutrons to protons. So now we're going to look at some general trends. For small atoms, usually the number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons, and this results in the atom being stable. So, for example, carbon-12. Carbon-12 has six neutrons and six protons. This is stable. But carbon-14 is unstable. It has eight neutrons compared to only six protons. Carbon-10 is also unstable. It has four neutrons compared to six protons. Sodium-23, with 12 neutrons and 11 protons, is considered to be stable. But sodium-24 with an extra neutron is considered to be unstable. Now I highlight the word usually there because as we can see, magnesium-24, 25, and magnesium-26, they are all considered to be stable. So a general rule of thumb is when the atom is small, the number of neutrons is usually equal to the number of protons. This results in a stable nucleus. However, as we can see for magnesium, three different isotopes are all considered to be stable. Atoms that are larger are stable when the number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons. Nickel-58 has 30 neutrons compared to 28 protons, and that's considered to be stable. 
but nickel-63 is considered to be unstable. There's just too many neutrons. Krypton-84 with 48 neutrons compared to 36 protons is considered to be stable, but Krypton-85 with an extra neutron is considered to be unstable. A nucleus that is unstable will decay, which means that the number of protons and number of neutrons will change. When this decay takes place, energy is emitted by the nucleus in the form of radiation. Hence, the decay is often referred to as a radioactive decay. So now let's get to the specifics of an alpha decay. Typically occur in unstable nuclei that are very large. Nucleus emits an alpha particle. An alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons and is charged. The alpha particle is identical to the helium nucleus with a charge of 2+. plus. We know that alpha particles travel at relatively slow speed and they can be stopped by a sheet of paper and even air. So the symbol we use for alpha particle, you can see there's two different symbols. The alpha symbol with the 4,2 or helium with 4,2. So let's look specifically at the alpha decay of uranium, uranium-238. The 92 refers to the number of protons. This is called the atomic number. And the 238 is the atomic mass number. This is the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. Working backwards, you can determine that there are 146 neutrons in total. So, when uranium decays, we end up getting a helium nucleus being ejected or emitted from the nucleus of the uranium, and we end up with something else being created. That something else is a smaller nucleus, and it's called thorium, 23490. So where does this 23490 come from? Well, let's focus on these three numbers, 238, 234, and 4. Notice that 238 is 234 plus 4. Notice that the overall atomic mass number must be equal before the decay and after the decay. So in other words, 234 plus 4 has to add up to 238. That is common for all alpha decays. Now let's focus on these numbers, 92, 90, and 2. Notice that 92 is equal to 90 plus 2. And so the number of protons is conserved, meaning that the number of protons before the decay have to equal the number of protons after the decay. This is true for any element that undergoes alpha decay. So this is the overall picture when uranium decays. After the decay of uranium, we have a helium nucleus, which is the alpha particle. We have radiation being emitted, and we have a new nucleus being formed, thorium in this case. We can use an equation to represent this. Radiation that is emitted is not usually shown in the equation. This equation can also be represented like this, with the alpha symbol instead of the helium symbol. Two terms that you may come across when studying this topic. Uranium-238 is called the parent nucleus, and thorium-234 is referred to as the daughter nucleus. All right, let's look at our secondary objective. The example here, polonium-210 is a radioisotope that undergoes alpha decay, and if ingested in large quantities, is lethal. Fill in the missing atomic numbers for the decay equation. So, can you solve for x and y? That's the goal of this question. Please pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you gave this question a try. Focusing on these numbers here, we write out the following equation. 210 equals x plus 4, or x is equal to 206. And there it is, 206. 
Solving for y, we focus on these numbers here. 84 equals y plus 2, or y equals 82. And there's our final solution. Our next example. In a hypothetical radioactive series, 21999 GBM undergoes three alpha decay processes. What is the product? Please pause the video now. Okay, I hope you tried this question. So this is what the decay equation looks like. 21999 GBM on the left side. We have three helium or alpha particles on the right side of the equation. And we have this mystery product called dB. We don't know what the x and y are. We could rewrite it like this, just to make the math a little easier. And now focusing on those numbers there, we write 219 equals 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus x, or 12 plus x. x is 207. So it looks like the answer could be A. But we have to complete our analysis fully. Focusing on these numbers here, 99 equals 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus y, or y equals 93. And so there's our final answer, and as you can see, none of the answers correspond to this. Finally, the last part of this video, I want to talk about one common element called americium-241. It is radioactive. It undergoes alpha decay, as you can see from the equation. And this is commonly found in ionization smoke detectors in your home. So if you have a smoke detector, there may be a chance that it has americium-241 in it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.